so this is the site uh, that actually I recommend uh, uh, for new joiners or beginners who wants to start with the uh, Hogboard. So basically what you need with Hogboard is the hardware itself and then you need the software. So again in software you would start with the tool you know, for compilation or cross compiling the uh, sources for uh, uh, sources for Hogboard and then you would need the tools for uh, flashing or downloading the uh, downloading the images on Hogboard and then you would uh, need utilities for flashing the sources or uh, flashing the images that you downloaded. And then uh, basically, so uh, the instructions here guide you step by step to do each of these things. So uh, where to download the sources and where to download the tools, where to, how to compile them, how to cross compile them, how to get the images and then how to download it on the target, what should be the target setup and after downloading it, how to flash it or how to execute them on board and then probably go to the level where you can build your own application. The Linux kernel and I am sorry that I didn't get any time to really focus on uh, uh, updating it but there is a lot of, uh, as I said, like uh, work or effort going on in uh, you know, Open Embedded uh, for enabling Hawkboard and uh, Open Embedded is already enabled with Hawkboard and you can get latest kernel images and sources from you know, Narcissus and uh, Open Embedded as well. So. Uh, and you can even get the complete angstrom build, gen2 and a lot of other things which are actively being uh, published by the uh, Hopcode community. You know, this is just a simple thing for any new business to uh, start working on it. So if you go down, like uh, you can see uh, the building procedure. So some details about Hopcode, like what uh, just pointed out, like uh, Almost all peripherals have been brought out on uh, Hogboard. Like we have tried to bring as many peripherals as possible. You can see like VGA, Composite in SATA, Audio, Audio in DDR, UART, LAN, USB, OTG, Host, MNC, and Ethernet. Expansions in the expansion support is really useful if you are trying to build any industrial or any uh, uh, portable device uh, for as your product like a SPI or a parallel port and a PRU. Uh, video port interface and uh, MMCSD, PWM, PCAP and all those things. Uh, there is Hogboard user manual and Hogboard schematics that you can refer to for uh, doing any of your uh, add-on cards or add-on boards with this. Uh, going to the software details uh, below, like you, could, you would see like uh, where to download ARM cross compiler for Linux, where to get a DSP cross compiler. It is actually C6 674X, which is a floating point DSP, and you get cross compiler free. Uh, you can download CCS uh, V4 version, uh, Platinum Edition. Uh, so, a lot of these tools are actually will help you in uh, the developing uh, dev the developing software and uh, uh, downloading it for and uh, uh, installing it and executing your uh, application. Uh, going down, like uh, you can see AS generator and uh, uh, a lot of tools are uh, getting up, uh, updated day by day, like uh, for the, uh, for, uh, for downloading as I said, like uh, if you can see the list tools there, like CFTP server, Teratom, including, so those are very simple tools on which you can required for any embedded device, we, uh, we do mention uh, those things. And uh, going to the sources, uh, the links take you to the Linux kernel and U-Boot. So you can download the uh, Linux kernel and download U-Boot. U-Boot is the bootloader and Linux kernel is uh, uh, enabled with uh, for Hawkboard. There are sample root file systems that we give. Uh, the, there is one uh, from Ubuntu, for Fedora, and uh, these things are provided by community, thanks to them. There is also one RAM disk image that I have put out on code as well. So when you want to get started with the device, like say, uh, uh, the Hogboard just ships with a USB cable and Hogboard. It is recommended that you buy a uh, uh, power external adapter uh, power supply, which is a minimum 500 milliamps, and the output is 5 ohm to DC. And then connect to a VGA monitor, uh, other peripherals that you want to do, uh, use or uh, with Hogboard, like a VGA monitor or a UART cable, Ethernet cable, all those things you can buy it externally. And then the, basically to start with, like you can, the board comes with the pre-flashed uh, U-boot. You can just connect to UART and do the settings that is shown here you know, for the baud rate and data bits. And uh, when you just power the device, you should see um, basic uh, screen coming up with the uh, Hogboard prompt uh, with U-boot. U-boot is quite old, as I said, like, but it generally boots. And if you have
have a VGA monitor connected, you will see uh, Hogwarts logo coming up as shown here. Uh, and then so you can see uh, command prompt. And if you want to build your own U-boot images and kernel images, so these instructions will enable you to build those. Uh, like once you get the uh, bootloader, uh, bootloader downloaded, so just follow these things after installing the uh, cross compiler. Uh, just to follow the steps mentioned there. After doing, after in compiling U boot, now in order to actually get uh, get it booted, uh, this is uh, U boot is the first uh, bootloader that uh, comes up on the platform. So basically, what you want, what you have to do is, uh, as you know, that uh, processor inside will have an internal RAM, and the GDR is uh, outside of processor and uh, when you switch on the board, actually the DDR or uh, the DDR2, whatever is there on the hot board, actually has to be configured or uh, for the timing parameters. So uh, use a tool called AIS Generator Utility and uh, give the U-boot as the compiled U-boot as the file, input file, and uh, configure all the options like DDR timing parameters and the PLL values and other peripheral related uh, details. Are shown uh, in, in these steps, and then you actually get a AIS uh, header based uh, U-boot. Now that actually you can use with uh, a UART to host download utility, which is uh, uh, shown below, and uh, you can actually download the uh, U-boot onto the board. So it should, so can you stop here? Like uh, the booting over UART as uh, shown in this section. So once you get the U-boot uh, the AS generation enabled U boot. Once you get that, you actually have to follow this step uh, using that other utility, which is the UART boot host utility. Connect the serial cable, follow these simple instructions. Give, please remember to give the U boot UIS, UART AAS bin file, and then connect the COM port and baud rate. Now, this actually downloads the content onto the DDR, and then once you uh, once it is downloaded, it will start automatically booting, and you will see the prompt on the terminal, so you hyper terminal. So now, having U boot, you can actually uh, flash NAND uh, with U boot. So the uh, procedure to flash a U boot with U boot, sorry. So U boot is now running on my DDR. Now using that U boot, you can actually flash uh, another U boot or U image or a kernel image or RAM disk or anything onto the NAND. So now since U-Boot is running, you, can, you don't need the UART host utility. You can uh, set the server IP and uh, client IP address, use a TFTP server, download the U-Boot image that you want to flash it on NAND, and follow these simple steps to write uh, to NAND. And once you write to NAND, uh, uh, once you write to NAND, you can uh, uh, start uh, booting over NAND. So there are these features which are um, uh, provided in, uh, on the board. So use those tip switches, configure it as shown here, so you will be able to boot the images over land. So this is about the bootloader. I think I am uh, able to clarify quickly what exactly I am talking about. If you have any questions, so please feel free to raise those questions after the talk. And the building other sources, it is again documented here. Just follow these simple steps. You will be able to boot uh, a Linux kernel with the RAM disk on uh, Hawkboard. Similarly, there, as I showed you previously, there were uh, images from community for Gen2, for Ubuntu, for Fedora, and many things. So you can use those things as well uh, for uh, uh, building applications. There is also this uh, Narcissus uh, build utility, uh, which is uh, you can actually use that for building any uh, traditional applications that you want to uh, use on the, on the hot board. Uh, so th these are few things that I wanted to highlight. I'm not showing sure any. Uh, critical demo aspects, but if you have any questions or any uh, any issues with this, please uh, let us know. We should be able to help you out. And uh, we have to get the uh, Linux kernel onto uh, DaVinci Mainline and kernel.org for Hawkboard. The effort is still uh, remaining with me, and as I said, like I tried with few patches, but after that, not able to spend time. But definitely, I will take this as a uh, actually, it's on me, and I'll try to fix that up uh, as soon as possible and uh, get the uh, hotspot running from uh, Linux mainline itself. Uh, there is, we need to also update to, uh, update to latest U-boot as uh, we see few uh, 
few good pictures coming up in your book where you can read uh, uh, images from NLC and read the images from USB. So they are very good for us to consider for Hawkboard. Uh, we need to upgrade to latest few good for this. So that also is in plan. So uh, let's uh, let's work towards that. So I'll definitely keep you all in loop uh, from Google Group. So I'll stop here and uh, I'm open to take any questions. So. Thanks a lot, uh, great audience, and uh, uh, and uh, thanks a lot for making Hubboard a good, a better, successful product. So any anything, any, and if you have any open items or any anything that you want to do with Hubboard, like if you want to, uh, if you want a roadmap of Hubboard, or if you can suggest something for us, like uh, how we how we have to do, or what kind of platform you are interested in, or what kind of data pad you want, or anything. Please mail us. We will be very open to take your requests there as well. We need hardware upgrades, a roadmap to hardware, and the kind of devices we need to be focusing on, or the products that you want to make. So feel free to come to us, and uh, we should be able to consider those things as well. So thanks again, and uh, I'll go into Q and A mode. Presentation mode is now disabled. So thank you very much, Kazane. Thank you very much, Jeff. Um, there has been no questions asked via the chat functionality um, in the WebEx. So at this point, I have unmuted the phone line. And if anybody has any questions that they would like to ask at this time, uh, please do so. Hello. Um, my name is um, Chris, and I just wondered if, the, um, if there's a site for um, you know, Linux beginners where um, uh, you could find um, the host um, a host um, distribution for um, developing um, for this device. As I mentioned, Chris, like uh, the wiki here, and there are a couple of links like as you can currently see on the web page. These are bit easy and uh, for you to actually start developing on Hotboard. Uh, I think this, this satisfies the basic need. Once you know some basic fundamentals of uh, embedded uh, um, embedded Linux or embedded system, uh, if not, uh, then there are quite, uh, quite a few online books which I can suggest uh, uh, on to you over mail. Uh, I can give you soft links for those books which can actually guide you for basic embedded uh, software. And then post that if you just follow this wiki, you should be able to work on Linux with uh, this build. Okay, to set up the um, the, the development um, environment. Okay. Does that answer your question? It does. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Kazim, there is a question um, on the chat functionality of the WebEx. The question is, does the Linux kernel that's ported to the Hawkboard support GPIO control via devices nodes? For example, with, for example, slash dev, slash GPIO1, and so on. Yeah, I understand uh, this question. So, uh, yeah, definitely um, there are uh, this, uh, the kernel that I support actually has the GPIO support, but if you are looking for any applications that you want to try out the GPIO access or application uh, space, then uh, we don't have one on Hawkboard that I mentioned. But uh, yeah, there was a lot of discussions which has already happened on Google Groups uh, regarding this. So there are some utilities which we provide in our EVM uh, SDK, uh, which can be pulled from uh, SDK, like the GPIO examples and utilities can be pulled from uh, SDK. They will as is run on this board, and you will be able to uh, configure it. Um, so it is uh, not that uh, difficult for sure. But uh, I think it is very important. I, I understand uh, uh, there are multiple requests which have come up uh, or uh, at least in last uh, couple of months where we are asked to support GPIO uh, and give some examples. So I think uh, I can spend some time or community members can spend some time in writing a small uh, note on how to actually use the uh, use these utilities from uh, SDK and uh, configure GPIO and uh, probably show it. Show with an example. 